All right, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today we're looking at Lucas Van Ness and his performance against the Kansas City Chiefs. I tell you what, Packers fans, Van Ness continues to get better and better. He had a big-time clutch performance against the Chiefs. This young rookie is really earning his stripes for this Packers defense as Green Bay looks to make a playoff run. And we've got a great set of cups for you today to highlight just that. As always, if you appreciate this content, give us a like, give us a comment with any feedback you might have. But without further ado, let's watch Van Ness against Kansas City. All right, we're going to open up with a pass rush, and there's Van Ness right there on the right side of your screen, the defensive right as well. This is a red zone situation, third down early in the game. It was obviously the Packers' red zone defense that was huge against Kansas City, and it's been the Packers' clutch defense that's been huge for them on this winning streak they're on right now as they're playing better football. One of the things I love about the Packers defensively is they keep it so simple in a lot of these situations, and they let their guys play. So here's an example of this. We're basically just getting standard pass rushes across the board here absolutely nothing special from anybody, right? It's just one-on-one, -on -one, or if you get a double team, you try and fight through it. The goal is just to get pressure on Mahomes, cover in the defensive backfield, drop seven people in the coverage, see if you can get to the quarterback. And again, let's focus on Vanessa right here. This is a backup left tackle in for the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, if you have a backup in the game, you want, if you have a star pass rusher, to dominate him in that situation. Vanessa, being a first-round draft pick, has the potential to be that guy. Let's watch how he handles this matchup. We get the snap. Right through his outside shoulder, rip through, chase down Mahomes, sack, force a field goal. That's how you do it, folks. Again, you got a backup tackle in the game. Attack him with your hands, separate, rip through. I mean, that is technically perfect. Again, watch what Vanessa does here. I love this technique right here where you threaten the left tackle with a bull rush. You charge right at him and get him backpedaling. Watch 64, backpedal a little bit, and then you shock him with your hands, and then you use your inside arm to rip through and knock down his outside arm like you do here. They get you past them, you'd sack the quarterback. Technically, this is perfect. Athletically, this is perfect. I mean, this is teach tape kind of stuff here from Van Ness. These were the plays that made him a first-round draft pick. He has the size. He has the athleticism. He has the technique. Now he's starting to get to production. He's starting to figure it out, folks. And if number 90 can figure it out, watch out the rest of the NFL in terms of offensive line. This guy is going to be a special edge defender. Yeah, Nick, and this was a big day for Van Ness going up against one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. One of his best pass rush days overall. Second highest grade of the season, 64.2. Did a really, really great job. Obviously, we see here, got another sack on the day, second sack on the season. And playing in limited snaps, I think Van Ness is being a contributor every play. And that's something you want from a guy like this that is definitely a role player at this point, but is probably going to grow and to be an absolute star one day. All right, let's switch it up and show a run defense. There is Van Ness right there on the right side of your screen. So the Kansas City Chiefs in this situation recognize that they have a light box that the Packers have against them. So you can only count them one, two, three, four, five, six. And there is five offensive linemen plus Kelsey tight ends. So they've got a chance to get man-on-man -man blocking across the board. That's usually a big disadvantage for any defense. And that usually results in massive runs, big productive plays down the field for the offense, especially when the Chiefs drop a play like they do here. So the Chiefs are basically going to pull this backside guard here to take on the linebacker. They're going to get a double team work right here, working to the backside linebacker. They're going to get a down block here from the center, kind of an anchor down technique right there, and Kelsey one-on-one -on, -one on Vanessa. And you can see, folks, how it's going to originate, right? There is a lot of green grass here. This guard has an easy seal there. The center has a seal here. You've got one-on-one -on -one blocks here for another seal. You've got a block out here, and then you get one-on-one -on -one pulling guard linebacker in space. Like, there is a lot of space for the running back to work. This has a chance to be a massive play for the Kansas City Chiefs. But watch what Van Ness does. He beats Mr. Taylor Swift himself and makes a big-time play, limiting this to a much lesser game than it should have been. Let's watch how it goes. Or right, you can see the pulling guard. You can see the pseudo double team there. You can see the back block. You can see Van Ness one-on-one -on, -one on Kelsey right there. Again, watch yourself up front from the Kansas City offense. Right there, let me freeze frame it. They've got everybody blocked, right? they got man on linebacker right there. They've got the defensive tackle, Kenny Clark's block, Quay Walker's block. The backside's cut off. You can see 34 Owens. He's coming into the picture. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one with all of this green grass. This is a 20-yard run, maybe even a touchdown, right? There's a lot of grass in play right here. This is a tough play for a safety to make one-on-one -on -one right here. Again, watch here. Again, look at all this space right here. This is a chance for Pacheco to make a big play except for number 90, except for Vanessa. Watch him play off Kelsey. Again, use his hands great. Play off, make the tackle, get him on the ground. Again, still end up being, what, a six, seven-yard run, which is a win traditionally for an offense. But sometimes a six, seven-yard run is a win for the defense because right here the Chiefs had the perfect play call called and the Packers were in a bad situation defensively to handle it. But because of Vanessa's ability to beat Mr. Taylor Swift at the point of attack like this, I tell you what, 
erasing a lot of blank space right there, making the tackle. This is awesome stuff from Vaness, right? Engages Kelsey, gets off him, makes a tackle. Look at his hands. Look how he long uses his long arms to get the offensive lineman off of him. We saw it when the pass rush on the first play. He does the same thing with Kelsey here and makes a really nice tackle. This is winning football. This should have been a 20-yard run for the Chiefs. Ends up being a six-yard run for the Chiefs. That's basically a 14-yard play from uh, Van Ness right here. And it's plays like these that are really starting to show up when you watch the film of this impressive young rookie. Yeah, Nick, and this is just showing Van Ness is really, really great, and he's good at bouncing back from things. He can really just shake it off and come back. Three games ago, he had a 26.9 tackling grade, his worst of the season, very high abnormality for him, and now the last three games in a row, he's done better than he ever has all season. He got into the the lab. He works on his tackling technique, 71.2, 79.2, 71.2, really has been killing it with his tackling percentages lately. And this just shows right here. He's able to get off of Kelsey, get onto Pacheco, who's traditionally a very hard runner, hard guy to get down. And he does an excellent job here, just showing that he can bounce back from bad grade and go on an absolute tear and something that motivates him and he gets better for it. So I'm really impressed with how Van Ness played in this game against a Chiefs offense traditionally that is very, very good. All right, going back to a pass rush situation, there's Van Ness right there on the left side of your screen, the right side of the defense. Again, the Chiefs here have their backup left tackle in the game. That should be advantage Van Ness. And the Packers come up with a great call against this offense here in terms of getting this one-on-one matchup because obviously anytime you have a backup offensive line in the game, you want to make sure he's isolated one-on-one. And how they do that is they actually bring Quay Walker inside this way. They have their defensive tackle right here lined up in this spot right here because the guard has to protect for that in case he comes they obviously have the defensive end lined up over here so the right tackle is going to look for here they're actually going to have him drop and replace quay walker in coverage he's going to come out this way quay walker is going to come this way and because again let me clear up the picture a little bit because these two offensive linemen are sliding that way it's going to force the center to slide this way to pick up quay walker which again results in your one-on-one matchup right here vanessa on the back of left tackle let's see how he does Okay, there's a snap. Again, you can see defensive end dropping into coverage. You can see Quay Walker replacing. And as a result of that, the Chiefs slid their protection to the right side of their offensive line. And there's your one-on-one matchup right there. And Vanessa does a good job, fights through, and hits Mahomes right as he throws it. Now, this is a personal opinion of mine. When you look at stats, you look at QB hits, you look at QB pressures, this would not count as all. This would not be a stat. This would not be a QB hit. This would not be a pressure in terms of any one stat sheet that you'd see on the broadcast or after the game. But to me, this is more important than hitting him as he's throwing or right after he's throwing, I should say. Getting contact on him him as he's stepping into the throw results in an errant throw. Because right there, folks, Mahomes makes this throw 99 times out of 100. I mean, the guy is going to be a future Hall of Famer. He's an MVP quarterback. He's won a bunch of Super Bowls. He's won two Super Bowls. He's been to three because he makes these throws all the time. He hits these seams all day. He's done this every single snap of his career if you give it to him. But because Van Ness alters him just a little bit, watch him just touch his shoulder right there as he's throwing, right? And it kind of just alters Mahomes just a smidgen. And it's errant, right? It reminds me of a golf swing, right? When you're in the rough a little bit and the ball's a little elevated over the top of you or or, uh, underneath you a little bit, you got to adjust your swing a little bit and the club doesn't fly as well as you'd like and the ball just misses a little bit. Sometimes it soars on you. This is what this reminds me of. Again, just a little altering of Mahomes as he's throwing the football results in an incomplete pass. To me, this is more important than hitting the quarterback while he's throwing. And this next play is a good example of that. So you can see Vanessa on the outside here. He's going to loop all the way around inside and hit Mahomes right as he's throwing the football. But Holmes is still able to complete the pass. And again, this is still a good job by Vanessa. I'm not taking anything away from 90 right here. Great effort working around, hit on the quarterback, get Mahomes on the ground. Obviously, that's much better than him having a clean pocket. But again, because the pressure became as he's throwing, as opposed to before he's throwing, Mahomes is able to complete the football. And to me, when I see this play right here, this will grade out in the stat sheet as a win for Van Ness, right? Quarterback hit, quarterback pressure, whatever. But in terms of the flow of the game, it's completion for a first down. But the previous play, which showed up as nothing for Van Ness, as I work my way all the way back to it here, right? This shows up as nothing for Van Ness. To me, this is just as important, maybe more so, because this, again, wipes away a 30-yard completion. It's second and 10 now as opposed to the second play, which was a first down completion for the Chiefs offense. Either way, Vanessa is doing a great job, but sometimes it's more than what the stat sheet's telling you because this would not show up on the stat sheet, but still a nice play by number 90. 
All right, switching up to a run defense, there's Vanessa right there on the right side of your screen. The Chiefs are once again in the red zone. They are driving. And sometimes the best part about red zone defense, in my opinion, is the ability to play as a team. It's going to be hard. Teams are running the football. It's very unforgiving as a defense. Sometimes a four or five yard run results in a touchdown or a key conversion, right? It's all about playing together as a team and making sure you get running backs, getting receivers on the ground, limiting the opportunity for big plays against, especially against a Chiefs team that is really darn good. Obviously, the stats haven't showed it, but this is still the Super Bowl champion, defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs offense. And up here, they again have the numbers for a really nice play. So this is going to be a standard kind of inside zone concept. We're going to get a double team action here working up to Quay Walker we're going to get a backside scoop here the left tackle the, on the right tackle excuse me is going to cut off Clark right there the three technique lined up on the outside shoulder of the guard and the left guard the right guard excuse me for the Kansas City Chiefs is going to work up to Campbell right there so again you can see and right there the left tackle is going to block out Ben S you can see they've got numbers right obviously they've got enough to cut back people off the back side they got a guy to insert for the safety right there so they got numbers inside in the red zone this is a big advantage offense situation but then watch how the Packers play this as a team, specifically Van Ness. Again, good quality red zone defense helps you make key stops, which is exactly why the Packers are winning games. All right, you can see everyone doing the zone blocking. You see the double team right there working up to Quay Walker. You can see the backside guard working up to Campbell. And right here, you can kind of see they got bodies on bodies right here. They got a chance here to maybe squeeze through here, maybe work this way. There's a chance this is a touchdown or at least, a, again, a good lengthy first down run, 10, 15 yard plus for the Chiefs offense. But I want to focus on what Vanessa does here and what everybody does as a team here for the Packers up front because they all keep fighting off blocks. Watch Vanessa come back, get a hand on the running back, force them back inside right here. Because right here in this situation, he's kind of dislocated a little bit. The left tackle is between him and the ball carrier. This looks like right now a win for the offense, a chance for Pacheco, the running back for the Chiefs, to either keep working vertically because he either wants to work right behind the center this way or maybe work over to this hash. But what Vanessa does is he forces him to cut back into his help. Both Kenny Clark's right there and Campbell comes across as well to be a part of the tackle. Limited gain for the Chiefs offense, right? Again, if you look at this schematically right here for the Chiefs and freeze frame it, this looks like this has a chance to maybe squirt for about a 9-10 yard 11 play, 9-10-11 yard play. But up front, the Packers are fighting through blocks. Brooks, the other rookies, fighting and keeping working. He ends up getting blocked out of the way by Humphrey, but he helps force the cutback as well. And Vaness fighting off the left tackle, getting away from the block here and forcing Pacheco inside and helping get him on the ground. He doesn't make the tackle, but he slows them up enough. He forces them to cut back into his help. And sometimes that's what you need in red zone defense because it comes down to, especially against good teams, you got to get into third down situations. You got to give yourself a chance to get off the field because as we saw earlier, you get, in the, you get them into third down situations, you get into pass rush mode, you sack Mahomes, you force a field goal, you win the game. It can be that simple. And the way you get into good third down situations is making sure when the offense has numbers in the running game that the damage is limited and Vanessa continues to show that he can help with that. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about doing a lot with a little and we're talking about play time and I want to compare that to another Packers player who is a star and that's Rashawn Gary a guy that everybody knows and loves on this Packers defense but let's also talk about the stop category we talk about it all the time it's a tackle that constitutes in a failure for the offense it's a key metric in the PFF defensive grading scale and I want to look at Rashawn Gary really fast great player we all know he's absolutely phenomenal 83.8 PFF grade on the season in 401 total snaps this season. Rashawn Gary has gotten 16 stops. Lucas Van Ness has had 275 total snaps. He has also gotten 14 stops this season, just barely two behind Rashawn Gary and over 125 less snaps. He is doing a lot with what he is given. And this is a guy that's as productive and as detrimental to offenses as Rashawn Gary is in 125 less snaps that is extremely impressive and this guy Nick Lucas Van Ness I think he's going to be extremely powerful once he gets all of the snaps that he could as a starter all right going the other way now there is Van Ness right there on the left side of your screen the defensive right again we're in a red zone situation here the Kansas City Chiefs are running a play they've run before they're going to get an anchor down here technique they're going to get everybody else blocking back Block out by the tight end, pseudo double team here, working up to the backside linebacker. Backside guard's going to pull right there. Again, they've got the numbers to do it. The Packers do a solid job defending it. But I want to focus on Vanessa one-on-one here against now the starting left tackle, Donovan Smith, for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
And this is one of the things that should make Packers fans pretty exciting because Vanessa does a great job. This anchor down block right here is pretty hard to work through, but he actually works through it here and draws a great holding penalty that unfortunately wasn't called. It should have been a game-changing kind of penalty. Unfortunately, it was missed. Let's check out what Vanessa did here. All right, you can see the guard pulling. You can see the anchor down. And again, watch Vanessa just attack with his hands. I love how he gets his hands in there. Now watch this left tackle here. You think that's holding? Good Lord Almighty. He is literally grabbing the back of his helmet while his right arm is hugging the outside shoulder of Vanessa right there. What are these refs looking at? This is clearly holding. And again, this is all because Vanessa is attacking and driving through. He would have had a chance to make the tackle or at least be part of the tackle. The rest of the guys up front for the Green Bay Packers do a great job. Brooks, another exciting rookie, is doing a good job. Fighting off blocks, great job up front here. But this should have been a 10-yard penalty against the Kansas City Chiefs. But this is the thing, though, as the season progresses, as you get more reps, like you alluded to, you're going to start drawing more and more of these penalties because refs are going to see this when they review the film. The refs do review the film, believe it or not. And they're going to be like, okay, Vanessa's drawing some calls here. We need to pay attention to number 90 because he's getting held. And the Packers coaching staff is going to help reinforce that. You're going to start seeing Lucas Vanessa draw a lot of holding penalties. Yeah, Nick, and a penalty, getting a penalty as a pass rusher can be very advantageous for your team, almost like pass interference for a receiver. This is something really good, but what can also hurt you is if you yourself get penalties on your own, and that's one thing Van Ness has been very good at not doing. Only one penalty called on Van Ness this entire season. He's playing very clean football, and I think that's really impressive for a rookie. He shows a lot of discipline. Like I said, blue-collar, lunch pail type of guy. Not a lot of complaining. Not a lot of, you know, diva is out of Lucas Van Ness. He's a really hard worker, and he plays good, clean football and doesn't have any negative plays for this defense. All right, we're going to end on a sideline view, and there's Vanessa right there at the top of your screen. So this is going to be a play action here and a pass play by the Kansas City Chiefs. And Vanessa, this is far from his best rep. He actually gets manhandled a little bit by the left tackle, who's just pass setting out to him in terms of pass protection, trying to sell the run. And it's going to be a run fake here for Pacheco. He's going to settle down and then kind of release into the route here. And Mahomes is going to play fake and look in the pocket, look for someone deep. But I want everyone, again, let me clear up the picture for you here. I want everyone to watch Vanessa this play develops. Again, it's an ugly play. He gets beat bad, but he makes a really savvy play that I think saves the Packers defense from giving up a big play. Let's check out how it goes. All right, there's the snap, the play action. You can see Vanessa get bullied a little bit right there. Is that holding again, folks? I don't know. You'd be the judge. Maybe, maybe not. But again, he'll hopefully start getting some of these calls. But he doesn't get past number 79, kind of gets bullied a little bit. But here's what I love. He sees Pacheco fly by him. What does he do? He grabs him, gets on him, covers him up outstanding stuff because this guy number 15 right here for the Kansas City Chiefs he has all kind of time right here nobody's open but you better believe if Vanessa misses Pacheco and Pacheco leaks out no flat here do you think Mahomes misses him or do you think Mahomes throws a dart at Pacheco and he scores a touchdown I think Pacheco scores a touchdown here most likely except for Vanessa recognizes him running by him and picks him up and making sure he can't get out these are the savvy plays that isn't mentioned during the broadcast right these are the smart you know, kind of thinking man football plays that are missed. But this can be the difference between winning and losing, right? This was an incomplete pass on a crossing pattern to Kelsey right here instead of a touchdown. We've shown a number of these plays during the cutups where the Chiefs potentially had a chance for massive plays, but Vanessa limits them to no gain or minimal gain. And these are the plays that I think really separate losing teams and teams that miss the playoffs from teams that make the playoffs. If you have guys that can make sm smart, savvy plays, just like this, especially when it's not their best rep. That, to me, is what separates Van Ness from a lot of other rookies. At his peak, he can make all kinds of great plays. We showed some of those today. But even at his worst, he's still a great addition to this Packers defense.